Hey, Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Mirror Genomics here making another video update today, in particular about uh, cross-reactive T-cells, which is a topic you have selected in our recent survey. So thank you to everyone who have voted uh, for that particular information and let's get started. Well, first of all, I actually covered this topic previously in video number 10, so please check it out and uh, that will give you some a uh, little bit of background but nevertheless we're gonna give you a little bit more background right now as well so first of all when cells get naturally infected by the virus some of that virus inside the cells will be destroyed and degraded so the viral proteins that are either on the surface of the virus such as the spike protein or inside the virus such as the nucleocapsid protein they will be destroyed and fragmented in tiny little pieces and these tiny little pieces they can be presented on the surface of the cell and the receptors that present these uh, tiny pieces of viral proteins they are called major histocompatibility complexes and they are divided into two classes class one presents type of fragments of viral proteins that are then subsequently recognized by cd8 T cells. Those are the cytotoxic T cells, also known as the killer cells, and those are the type of cells that will destroy the infected cells. Now, major histocompatibility complexes number two, they present these tiny viral fragments to CD4 T cells, and these are helper T cells. These are the type of cells that help to activate the immune system, as the name suggests. So, for example, they will they are involved in the activation of the of B cells, which are responsible for producing antibodies against the virus. And together, these type of uh, receptors, major histocompatibility uh, complexes, can also be referred to as human leukocyte antigens, if you want to know how this confusion of names are <laughs> related to one another. So basically, cells that are infected can fragment the virus, present the fragment of the virus on a surface of the cell to signal the immune system and tell the immune system, hey, come and destroy me before I start infecting my my friends around me okay so that that would be the purpose here now what's cross reactivity this is the purpose of the video so let's define that there's two types of cross reactivity that we could be referring to so one type of cross reactivity is between different variants of the same virus so for example can your infection by say Delta variant protect you through cross-reactivity against Omicron variants. So that's type of uh, one type of cross-reactivity we could be discussing. And the other one is cross-reactivity between different viruses. So here certain cells when they well when we get infected right we can produce memory T cells as well and those memory T cells will remember hey we recognize these type of uh, fragments before if you get reinfected by same virus or if you get reinfected by a similar virus such T cells can then be reactivated and that would be cro memory T cells cross reactivity and we're going to discuss both of these examples so first let's talk about variant cross reactivity and we're going to talk about what else but Omicron right so in this first paper I'm going to talk about is to the authors wanted to investigate whether previous natural infection of unvaccinated individuals or vaccinated vaccination itself could protect you against Omicron through cross-reactive T cells. So they studied uh, vaccinated people uh, who were vaccinated by either Johnson & Johnson or Pfizer vaccine and half of those vaccinated people were also naturally infected and they wanted to compare all of those um, differences. So. Typically in each group there was about 15 to 20 people. These are very difficult studies to perform these, to study the cross-reactive T cells. They're not simple uh, type of studies, so usually they don't involve too many patients. Nevertheless, what they were able to find is that, oh, by the way, I apologize for all the noise in the background, but there's a protest going on right now in a, in a city and it's loud. <laughs> there's no escape of, from it. So um, what, uh, what they were able to observe is that those who were previously infected or uh, they were vaccinated and infected or vaccinated and uninfected, overall, your protection against Omicron, the reaction of your T-cells to the Omicron variant dropped between 
15 to 30 percent depending on, on on the group so yes there is reduced reaction and in 15 percent of those individuals there is absolutely no reaction no cd8 t cells available to to be able to fight omicron which simply suggests that potentially omicron might also be uh, driving t-cell immune escape as well so this could be an example of that nevertheless for those who did have t-cells that were that were active the type of chemicals those t-cells were releasing and the type of cells those t-cells were was very similar to what has been observed against other variants so the authors concluded that it's very likely that such uh, such t-cells would protect you against severe disease like it would have been protecting you in past infections so there is that now let's talk about memory t cells t cells cross reactivity so this particular study claimed this is the first study of its kind that was that investigated t uh, outcome based on t cells not just based on infection but based on exposure to the virus so what these particular authors did is they they use contact tracing and uh, similar to what I described in uh, video number 27 where I discussed how contact tracing was used to see how infectious Omicron is. So the same type of idea, they use contact tracing to, to see and prove that 52 certain individuals definitely got exposed to the virus, but only half of them ended up getting infected. So then they wanted, these authors wanted to see whether they had any protection thanks to previous exposure to say common cold viruses. Why common cold viruses? Because they also belong in a coronavirus family. And the way in order for cross reactivity to, to take place, clearly fragments of the proteins, viral proteins in the common cold viruses they have to be, some of them have to be similar or identical to those found in a SARS-CoV-2 virus as well. So these authors did that, they analyzed the protein sequences of common cold viruses and compared them with, against the protein sequences of SARS-CoV-2 viruses and they found similarities and then they studied those similarities to see whether such tiny little fragments of similarities could be presented by those major histocompatibility complexes. So they had to use computational modeling to see which one of these fragments, they called epitopes, could be used for the study. And they also used some uh, epitopes that have been previously shown uh, uh, through empirical uh, demonstration with actual cells. So together they, they, they assembled number of these uh, fragment sequences and they, they literally made them from scratch and they took the blood from these 52 people who were exposed to the virus and they checked how many of them had T cells that were reacting to these fragments and uh, that would then insinuate that obviously if they had T cells then uh, potentially those that protection if you were not infected and you had already those T cells present, those T cells had to come from your prior infection to common, common colds. And what they were able to show is that the uninfected individuals that were exposed to SARS-CoV-2 virus had a higher frequency of such T cells than those who were infected. So the authors proudly proclaimed that this is the first demonstration of cross-reactive uh, memory T cells protecting against uh, against SARS-CoV-2 infection and therefore one should consider potentially building T cell based vaccines but and there's a two big buts <laughs> but number one is the fact that when they compare the difference between that frequency in uninfected individuals versus infected individuals it was very small the odds ratio which is basically the default difference was 1.06 where one is equal so you can see there was a very small difference only and yes in biology sometimes small differences can have very large impacts 
nevertheless this was not a huge difference observed and but number two is that our favorite scientist persona non grata dr bosch whom we've introduced for the first time in video number five completely disagreed with the results with this particular paper now dr bosch is famous for his proclamations of uh, how vaccination in the midst of pandemic could be affecting immune escape variant variants development and and he's a huge proponent and totally gung-ho on innate immunity and that's why we find him interesting is because he is just completely obsessed about innate immunity and claiming that innate immunity is your largest protective barrier against infections in general and also very interesting information that he provides based on how innate immunity contributes to the de natural development of the pandemic progression so clearly he concludes that this, this these author's conclusion is incorrect because the fact that they're observing presence of those memory t cells does not mean that those memory t cells were responsible for for protection against infection because correlation is not a not a causation so it's not a cause of cause of protection it's a byproduct of protection whereas the actual protection he claims would have come from innate immunity of course he's gonna say that right so he, he's claiming that it would have been the innate immunity that would have first help you protect you from that infection and then the fragments of the virus would have been exposed and potentially trigger re-trigger those memory t cells and not the other way around where memory t cells were triggered first and then protecting you so that's very interesting unfortunately dr bosch is not someone who does active research so he's more a commentator so therefore we cannot have proof from him we have to wait for proof to be obtained from other laboratories so this is something really interesting so there is the video on cross-reactive t-cells as uh, selected by you guys so thank you once again to everyone who voted now hey we have another COVID q and a event coming up number five they've been super fun and last one we had we had people come from all over the world and uh, these are basically the way it works is we collage number of questions that are submitted to you we answer those questions and then it's open floor and we just have a big discussions and it's getting more and more fun so definitely definitely check it out the first 10 people who subscribe to our newsletter we will send you free tickets link to the event is in the description below so check it out and there's more tickets available than just those 10 so definitely we hope to see more of you in in the upcoming event if you like this video give us a like subscribe to the channel leave a comment most importantly share the video when we grow we can obviously create more content like this for you so and we're looking forward to seeing you next time bye everyone